potatoes have now had about a 20 minute head start, so it's the perfect time to get the lamb and these sauteed summer squashes going. I'm going to start with the lamb. And what I'm going to do is begin by covering it in coarsely grated pepper. And I mean covering it. I want to get it on there nice and thick. This is key to the flavor. Plus it adds a cool texture and, well, grinding pepper is always just fun. Use your hands to press it into the meat here and then flip it over. Repeat on the other side. Nice fatty side. This one's a lot easier to work with than the back side of the cut. Nice and thick. Oh, this is going to taste so good. Beautiful, beautiful little lamb chops. Press it into the meat again. And then add oil to a saute pan. I'm using olive oil. Add a nice amount. I'm just going to go give this a little wash off because I have cross-contaminated it with some lamb juice. There we are, all clean and ready to go. Meanwhile, let's get back to getting this lamb started. So I'm going to take this beautiful rack of lamb and I'm going to place it fat side down in the hot oil here. I'm going to set it down in such a manner so that any splashing oil splashes away from me because it's hot. Give it a little loving swirl here. Coat it. Keep it moving. And let it brown for about three to six minutes or until the color looks beautiful. This little beauty has been browning for several minutes now, so I'm going to carefully give it a flip over here. I'm going to pause for a few moments right here and really let it get the bottom of the roast. Oh wow, that looks really nice. What a glorious presentation this is. Right, go ahead and drop it down here. Let it keep on doing its thing for a bit longer. This bad boy is looking beautiful. I'm going to go ahead and stick a thermometer in there. About halfway in. And what I'm looking for is an internal temperature of about 140 degrees. It's a sizzly little guy. Good. The thermometer is just at 140, so it's the perfect time to pull it. It's going to continue to cook anyway because of the heat that's left in the bones. Now the next part is to go ahead and empty out almost all of this oil into a nice heat-proof container. You really don't need that anymore. Just reserve a little bit of it so that you can saute up your shallots. Give those a little love. They'll pick up the flavors of the lamb beautifully. Just want to move them all around the pan here and sort of gather them into the middle. Then sprinkle on just about a teaspoon of flour. What we're going to do is make a little bit of roux. Add just a little bit more of that oil in there. There we go. Beautiful. Add just enough oil to soak up the flour. And what you want to do is take this to a very dark, dark brown color. So with the sizzling and the popping of the lamb all done, it's a great time to go ahead and get the veggies started. So I have a nice pre-warm saute pan here to which I'm going to add olive oil, just a little bit. And then I'm going to toss in an entire crookneck squash and an entire zucchini squash. To those, I'm going to add a clove's worth of garlic, a nice big pinch of freshly minced basil, and another handful of shallots. I'm loving the shallots in this meal. Just give these guys a little toss here. A little salt and pepper to help them along. And they're just going to kind of do their own thing over here. Just toss them periodically as you're cooking them to ensure even cooking. A 
salt and pepper to finish them off. In the meantime, I'm going to continue stirring my roux, looking for that nice dark brown color that I was talking about. We have a nice dark roux here with the shallots being heavily caramelized. They're pushing that burnt envelope, so they're going to have a really rich, full flavor. Next part is to add about an ounce of red wine and cook that off. This is for color and complexity of flavor. You can see how it thickens up when the flour hits it and as the water cooks out of the wine. Yummy! That's beautiful. While that finishes cooking out, you can go ahead and add the lamb back into the pan. Just like that. There's going to be some drippings on the clean plate that you used. You're going to want to put those back into the sauce as well. Tons of flavor in there. Don't miss out on that. Then add a couple ounces of brandy. And then light it on fire. Woo! Now this fire is going to help sort of sear off the lamb and finish off the flavors. It's also going to concentrate the flavor of the brandy and the wine. It's going to be so good. Move that around a little bit. Wow. Look at that. That is gorgeous. Now eventually the alcohol is going to burn out of the brandy and the fire is going to stop. That's the point when you know your sauce and your lamb are done. Yum. Well, the fire has burned out, so I'm going to go ahead and take this off the heat. Let it just sit over there for a moment while I finish off the zucchini and the squash. This need just a moment longer, so I'm going to go ahead and get the potatoes out of the oven. These little beauties are going to be so good. Love that the potatoes soaked up most all of the butter and just made the skins beautiful and wrinkly and crisp. The first thing I'm going to do is bring in the potatoes, place them right in the center of the plate. Next thing I'm going to do, stack the rack of lamb, cross potatoes interlacing the rib bones for the drama and presentation like I was talking about. Then add the little squashes around it. Don't those look gorgeous? And then the sauce. Mmm. Doesn't that look good? These babies are ready to go on the table. 